think actually boxing, conventional boxers, is easier than fighting YouTubers and, you know, novices. You ask any professional of that and they'll tell you that. Because novices, they don't really know what they're doing themselves. Okay, it's Charlotte Daly here with Male Sport Boxing. I'm joined by Tommy Fury once again. How are you, Tommy? I'm well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not bad, not bad. So, last time we caught up was just before your fight with KSI got the job done, walked away with a victory. Yeah. It wasn't the most artistic fight yeah. in the world. What did you make of KSI's performance? Um, his performance was, well, it wasn't a performance, was it? <laughs> he didn't come in there to box at all. Um, but looking back on it, you know, he was never going to stand there and trade with me because I'm a lot heavier than him. Um, so his plan, you know, he could hear it in his corner just to, to clinch me all night, you know. Um, so it is what it is. I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I was upset at the time because, you know, it was a... It was a a massive atmosphere, massive build up and I just wanted a good fight to like yeah. stand there and, and have a fight. But when you got somebody doing star jumps at the corner and running from corner post to corner post, it's very difficult to um, to fight them sort of guys who just don't want to engage and it just don't really want to win the fight. You just wanted to get through the round. So um, listen, a win is a win, no matter what. And uh, we move on to the next. I'm sure next time I'm going to give the fans a good knockout, definitely. And that is the thing about next time, you know, you've got some criticism because of um, the fight and the performance, but within your own personal standards, it must be quite hard to fight against, you know, these YouTubers that are, have like a lesser capability. Do you think that you've struggled to show the best version of you because of that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was saying this to Bettina the other day. I think, I think actually boxing, conventional boxers, is easier than fighting YouTubers and, you know, novices. Um, and, you, and you ask any professional of that and they'll tell you that because um, novices they don't really know what they're doing themselves and it's the punches are coming from everywhere and they're just leaning out of shots and it's just horrible and messy whereas with a conventional boxer you know they're in front of you they're there and you know what you're getting and it's like it's. I do think it's easier and during sparring and the build up to the KSI fight um, you know I was sparring with solid professionals and I was putting on clinics in the gym you know, so it does make me want to go back and be like, oh God, just give me a boxer, please. Just give me a normal boxer to, to let to let me show what I can do because, you know, I was just seeing my performances before I started fighting these guys. My performances were good. I was knocking guys out. I was, you know, I was getting them out of there and it was some good combinations. But these guys are just, I don't know, when you throw a jab, they, they run 100 mile away. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's very difficult. So uh, I don't know. I'm sure, you know, someone, you know, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, they look like, to me, they want to stand there a bit more and they don't sort of do erratic things like KSI. Um, so maybe, you know, that'd be a bit more of a good fight for the fans to see. Mm -hmm. Now, you did just say that, before we talk about the Jake Paul potential rematch, um, you did say there about wanting to fight traditional boxers and it's kind of sending me that urge. Now, Opataya has come out and said that he would love the opportunity to beat you up. Yeah. And he said that he would be more than happy to go toe to toe with you in a title fight. Does that make you want to really go back? Do you think that that's something that you'll do soon? I bet he would, wouldn't he? Mr. Unified World Champion against a ten and a ten and no novice. Um, no, but listen, it's good, isn't it? Uh, you know, the world, you know, world champion like that, you know, the top of the pinnacle of his division in the sport. You know, I was talking about a guy who's had 10 fights and who is a novice, you know, who did really have an amateur background. So, listen, it's good. It's very good. Um, I don't recall this happening before where world champions are wanting to fight, you know, people right at the bottom of the pecking order who's had 10 fights and who's not in contention for anything. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. It's funny. I'm just happy to be in this position. Um, they, you know, obviously we all know why, why he would take that fight. But, you know, I, I'm going to make the most of the crossover team while it's here because, you know, it's not beat around the bush. You know, it's, it's a lot more financially better than conventional boxing. Uh, the money that these fights are generating, conventional boxers never see in their career. You know, uh, I'm sure Jay up tire could box and win all the belts, but it wouldn't be cumulated. You know, the fraction of what these crossover fights can generate. So I'm definitely going to make the most of it while it's here. But, you know, at the end of the day, the plan is to always challenge for that, for that top strap, you know, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel right in myself to leave in the sport and not have challenged, not even just, you know, try to win the world title. My dream, my goal, and I do believe I will win one at the end of the day because I've seen far worse people win one. I have, so 
I think, yeah, we're going to make the uh, most of the crossover scene and then when that's all said and done, I'll challenge the top boys and we'll see where we, where we go. OK, so the title fights are in the future. We're sticking with YouTubers and crossovers for the moment. You said about Jake Ball, Logan Ball. Have you spoken to Jake since the fight with KSI personally about getting that rematch on? Um, he messaged me the other day and said, congratulations, brother. You know, I could tell there was something wrong with your hand, all this sort of stuff. Uh, being extra nice. <laughs> um, trying to get that fight on. <laughs> trying to get that fight on, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, um, it's one of them. I think the fight, you know, it is inevitable. Uh, he knows that I'm his biggest draw. Um, and for me now, you know, sitting at the top, like, you know, I've done things that he hasn't done. You know, him and KSI have been talking about fighting for years. I literally came and inside 12 months, I beat the pair of them on their own too. So, I don't know, it is what it is. It's my choices now. You know, no matter what, I, I'm the head of this crossover thing now. And it's all right by saying because I beat the two best men, isn't it? So, whoever I want to fight next, it's up to me. And, um, you know, I can pick and choose these guys. I'm right, Lisa. Well, we look forward to seeing you back in the ring. Now, this weekend, there is another crossover fight of sorts with Tyson Fury taking on. A bit more dangerous to fight. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Now, I was at the open workout the other day and I was watching Tyson and he had this like look in his eye that I saw before the Deontay Wilder fight. To me, that just shows how seriously he's taking this. From somebody who's on the inside, how seriously has he been taking it and how serious has Camp been for him? He's took it probably as serious as any of his other fights. He's put in more weeks of training for Francis Ngannou than he did for Deontay Wilder. So it shows how, how serious he's taking it. You can tell by the way he's performing, even in that one bit workout, which doesn't really show anything, you know, how switched on he is, how focused he is, how sharp he is. So I do feel like it is going to be an early night on Saturday night because you just can't, you know, have your first boxing fight. He's, in my opinion, the best to ever do it. And, you know, do some good. It just doesn't happen like that. There's levels to boxing. You know, there's, there's a lot of levels where you can get France's gas tank will be put to the test as well. Because in MMA, you like it or not, you do get little bits of rest in here and there, you know, with a, with a different style of fight. Or boxing, someone's on you 24 7, three minutes of that round, and you've got 10 rounds to do. It's, it's a tall order for him. So I do believe Tyson will get it out of there. I, I, think, I think four rounds and under, I'll be honest. Yeah, I actually say this quite a lot that I think Tyson is the most durable heavyweight on the scene. It's kind of surprising given his build, yeah. but what's he like in camp in terms of like fitness? What sort of stuff is he doing and how long does he kind of push him to talk? He is a machine, you know, uh, everybody who's ever set foot the gym with him can say that. Um, I've trained with him for a long time and, you know, he just keeps going. He just keeps going and keeps chugging along like uh, like, like an old car with like 800 miles on the plank. He just, he just never, never quits, never stops. So, um, but it's his mindset. That's what that's what puts him on top of the world. And not only his skill and talent, but the mindset he, he puts him above any one of these guys, because there's not an ounce of doubt in his mind of his mind that he can't get Francis and Gano out of there. You know, when you've got somebody like that in front of you, it's a very hard man to beat. And he's just um, he is he is the full package of what a fight would be. And in terms of training, again, at the other workout, as you said, you can't take too much away from that. But he was switching between starters or the like southpaw. Does that kind of give us a bit of an insight into his training? Has he been training with, like, sparring with both orthodox and southpaw? Because Ngon is a bit of an unknown entity. You don't really know what you're going to get from him. Every box, you know, has been ticked in the camp. Um, Tyson's a... You know, he's, he's a professional veteran, 34 fights, and um, he's seen everything. He really has. It doesn't matter if Ngannou come out, you know, upside down, but to his legs, you know, he still will make a difference. Tyson's used to everything. Um, and every and every box has been ticked, like I said. So, uh, yeah, just expect a good a good show. And, um, yeah, enjoy it while it lasts, I think. <laughs> um, one more question on training before I promise I will move on. Um, he sparred against Joseph Fanta for the first time, Andy Lee was saying. Why has he not sparred him before? Is that because they're in camp together and they just had to lay that house? Like, why have they only waited until now? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I just think it's all about styles and stuff like that. Obviously, Joe Parker's got a fight coming up. Um, and I think he's fighting a tall guy, um, around about six foot seven or six foot eight, maybe. Um, and obviously, Joe Parker's similar height to Francis Ngannou, similar sort of build. So uh, I think for this one, it matched up well. And it is a high risk fight for Tyson because he loses, he'll probably feel an element of humiliation. Yeah. And 
if he gets hurt, then that fight with Usyk gets pushed. So why why now? Why is he doing this now? I think um, because you know it's it's just it is what it is, isn't it? It's a mammoth event. You know, it brings all viewers from across the world into this. It brings everyone who watches UFC into this. It brings every boxing fan into this. So it is a really massive spectacle. And at the end of the day, you know, I know oh, you can't overlook anybody. But, you know, this should be like kind of a routine victory for Tyson. I think any of obviously, France is a massive guy, strong guy, but, you know, he isn't a boxer. Um, and I do think Tyson will have his way. And then move on to the big one. Um, but, you, you know, you ask Tyson himself, he's all business. You know, he's, he's, all, he's all about Saturday night. He doesn't even mention music. He's not interested in that at the minute. It's all about Francis Ngannou, rightly so. So uh, I'm sure after Saturday night, we can we can all look forward to the big one. Yeah. And we've been down to the venue. It's amazing. How do you think it compares to when you were there with Jake? Oh, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it's similar, very similar sort of thing. Um, the Saudis just know how to throw on a show. You know, they really do. I think I think you took on it. You know, one for two to build that room. Oh, that's a twenty-five thousand arena. Like normally, it take other places, you know, years to build that. But they definitely know how to put on a show, and it's just amazing boxing out here because they really do make the fighters feel like, you know, gods. You know, you walk around, you know, Tyson, rightly so, heavyweight champion in the world, but he's having police escorts. He's <laughs> weaving in and out of traffic. He's, uh, you know, they really do make a fuss and uh, they, they treat you like kings. And they did when I fought Jake Paul. You know, they give me absolutely everything: cars on hand limos, you know, whatever the best hotel rooms. It was it really nice. So um, we love Saudi and we're happy to be here. Yeah. And I'm going to finish by two questions for you. First one, prediction for Saturday night, test through France, Garni. What's going to happen? What now? My prediction for Saturday night is I'm going round four and I'm going to say France is going to be walking in. I think he's either going to clip by a short up or an upper up, to be honest, or maybe even straight away. Right. But I think I don't think France or Ross will last more than four rounds. I'll be brutally honest. I mean, maybe if the UC fight wasn't Lula, Tyson would go in there and have a bit of fun and play around with him a little bit and maybe carry him a few rounds. But you know, if you can get him out of there in one round with a big fight, moving, you will do. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And a final question: If you were to ditch the YouTubers now, what three cruiserweights could you want right now, Ross? Oh, I don't even know. I mean, I haven't even been keeping tabs on <laughs> the creatures because all my last few fights and whatever's been about this crossover scene, uh, I don't know of anybody that wants me, I guess. <laughs> That's a good answer to say. Open to anything. Open to anything, I don't mind. <laughs>